so there are two principles of logic, evidence and the law of non-contradiction. The idea is, when we think logically, we have to follow both of these. And it also means that everything else we're going to learn about logic and the different principles and specific rules come back down to this. How can I use my mind in a way where I'm sticking to the evidence and I'm being consistent and I'm not contradicting myself? Let's talk a little bit more about each of these. Evidence, where does it come from? It comes from observation. The detective, for example, uses his eyes to see the body laying on the floor and the position of the body. Um, he sees the gun if he looks at it. Um, he, of course, also relies on experts. So the fingerprints will be sent to a computer program that's been designed by experts to see whose fingerprints it matches. Um, the body will be sent to the medical examiner who will use her observation to figure out the cause of death and then report that to the detective. So the detective uses their own observation, but also the, the conclusions of other people, but then the detect that they use their observation to get their, their conclusions. And you need to use, if you're the detective, use your experience to judge whether what they say is reliable. So everything comes down to observation. Um, and if, we put this in, form, in the form of a what to do. Basically, it says that um, you need evidence to be the starting point for all your thought processes, and also you need to constantly check back against the evidence. So the constant checkpoint. Also, where does observation come from? That's a really basic question. Um, basically, it comes from our senses, right? Each of us has this access to the world through our eyes and ears and sense of touch. And um, that's our basic ac access to the world. And then other people have that same access. And we then have to judge whether they're doing it right, you know, and doing it well. and um, ultimately, we come back down to our own observation, which comes from sense perception. But there's one other kind of observation besides sense perception, and that's um, how do you know what you're thinking? Can you know directly what thought is going through your mind or what you're imagining or what you're feeling? Um, you don't see your thoughts. You don't use your sense of touch to know your thoughts. You use something called introspection. Each of us has that ability to observe directly the contents of our own mental processes. So those two basic sources of observation. Okay. How about the law of non-contradiction? The basic idea of this is that nothing can be both A and non-A. I can't both be making marks on this blackboard, this whiteboard right now and not making marks on this blackboard right now. Um, that would be a contradiction and that's impossible. But this is not the complete statement of the law. Remember, it has a couple qualifications that need to be made. But if I, we look at history, 
somebody named Parmenides way back before Aristotle in ancient Greece, he stopped here. This was his complete idea of the law of non-contradiction. And um, this actually, as it's stated, is not true. There are exceptions to it, and many, many exceptions. For example, when you were a little kid, you might have been three feet tall, that was A, and now you're, say, five foot six. So you can be both three feet tall and not three feet tall, five foot six. Why can you be both? Because of change. Things change over time. So Parmenides thought, he thought, this is a law of all reality and all thinking. And therefore, there must be no such thing as change. That's what Parmenides said. So he chose the law of non-contradiction against the evidence. And he said there was no such thing as change, even though all the evidence of his observations said that things changed. Aristotle came along um, a couple hundred years after Parmenides, and he said, we need to put two qualifications onto the law of non-contradiction. One of them, because of change, is nothing can be both A and non-A if we just put at the same time. That would take care of change, right? You can't be both three feet tall and not three feet tall at the very same time, but at two different times you can because things change and you can change. Um, but even there, it, and obviously that happens all the time, it can be 50 degrees in the morning and 75 degrees in the afternoon, not a contradiction because it's two different times. Parmenides also, though, then there were still exceptions. Even if you said at the same time, the other exception would be, what about this pen? It's green and not green at the very same time. But we say, yeah, but not in the very same spot, okay? So um, Parmenides, because he chose this against the evidence, he said, oh, there's nothing, there are no parts of reality, right? Reality doesn't come in parts because that would be a contradiction. Reality just is one huge sameness, okay? And Aristotle said, that's ridiculous. Everything has to be verified against the evidence if we want to know about the real world. And the evidence tells us that reality comes in parts. And so we can just fix the law of non-contradiction and take care of different parts of things. And we can say nothing can be both A and non-A at the same time and in the same respect. So that means like two different parts, the two different parts of the pen. One can be green and one can be not green. It could be two different parts of the earth, like it can be summer here in California and winter in Australia at the very same time because it's two different places. And there are even other things that aren't places or parts of things. For example, um, can I be both here and not here at the very same time. Well, if I'm here physically, but I'm not here mentally, I'm thinking about something else, that's not a contradiction because it's in two different ways or two different respects. I'm here physically, but mentally I'm not, okay? Or even we can have mixed feelings or, you know, love and hate someone at the very same time because we don't love and hate them for the very same reason. So those would be examples of different respects. Okay. So that's the basic meaning of the law of non-contradiction. Okay. The idea is that now, now that Aristotle fixed it, this is a description of the entire universe, right? There's nothing in the entire universe that violates this law. So if we want our thinking to be true, if we want our thinking to reflect reality, we need to follow this law all the time and we have to make sure that we never have contradictions in our thinking, that all of our thoughts and all of our conclusions 
fit together into one non-contradictory whole, one consistent whole. So um, let's just ask one more question, which is what is the payoff of thinking logically, right? We want to know, we're going to learn all the principles and specific rules for making sure we do this in our thinking, but why should we bother? Why should we bother trying to do that? And so why be logical is the question. What's the payoff? And the answer is, well, by being logical, our ideas reflect or describe the way the world really is instead of just being, instead of being false, right? So the answer is we get truth. That's the reward. We have our best chance to reach truth if we're logical and um, also succeed, right? Because our plans will fit with the real world and will be effective. This leads some people to ask the question, though, who decides what's true? So who decides what's true? Well, there's one sense in which nobody decides it, really. It's just there's the world, and we're trying to get our minds to grasp what's really there and what's really out there. But there's another way that I could answer that, and that is to say you do, right? Each of us decides what's true, but not just arbitrarily, not just by whatever idea we happen to believe or whatever idea we want to be true, but each of us decides what's true by thinking logically. So we each, by following these principles, figure out for ourselves how the world actually is.